Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. That's uh, the last day of May, May 31st, and uh, man, it's warmed up. It's been a uh, fast-paced May for us. Boy, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, getting through swarm season with the bees and uh, getting the garden going. All in the middle of this COVID-19 thing, you know, not being able to get out much. So I notice there's a lot of people at Lowe's and... Uh, like man those people are crazy so i'm not doing it but uh we do the uh uh tractor supply pickups so that's a great thing that they do so uh i get all my chicken feed and things for the garden and supplies through there and uh so let's uh walk around i'll show you what we got going on here at the homestead this month do a little update gonna show you the garden and uh what we got going on down there we got a new garden this year uh, a new spot for some watermelons and uh, I'll show you how the new little chicks are doing and head down by the bees and show you what's going on with the beehives and I'll try and uh, swing up to the house and uh, maybe give a quick house to her uh, they're getting pretty close to uh, almost being done it has been a long long process let me tell you and most of it's not very pleasant either <laughs> so i'm going to switch to my other camera uh, so this wind doesn't mess with the mic plus i can zoom in on stuff and i think it'll look a little better i'm going to give that a shot so uh, let's switch cameras and we'll get started yeah there we go this camera is a lot better than the gopro especially for zooming in because the GoPro doesn't have a zoom. This is a Sony uh, FDR AX53. And uh, man, it's a nice camera. It shoots 4K, has a 30 times optical zoom, uh, built-in image stabilization with an IBIS. It's pretty slick. Let's uh, head on down this direction. Go by the fruit trees so that late freeze we got uh or near freeze i think it did freeze got most of our fruit there's uh, i think one peach on here and no apples there are however a few little dinky pears on this tree so we might get some pears there's one right there we might get some pears. Uh, the peaches that were left on our peach trees, we thought they had done okay after that cold spell. But then uh, the worms got to them. And we didn't have that problem last year. There's a few peaches on there, but they're full of holes. And the rest of them dropped. And that little apple tree, there's no apples. So I put uh, more comfrey around the bottoms of all the fruit trees. There's some. And that's supposed to help pull up nitrogen from deep in the soil. And what you do is throughout the year, you'll pull off the uh, leaves and lay them in here as mulch. And those leaves are full of nitrogen. In fact, people take comfrey leaves and they will mix them in water and it makes like liquid fertilizer uh, after it sits for a while. So that's basically the story on the fruit trees. The fruit's kind of a bust. I've uh, cleared out most of the compost. I've only got one pile left and that's the stuff that where we have uh, a lot of household paper goods in there, like paper plates and uh, paper towels, things like that. Plus there's a lot of leaf litter in here and just other uh, leaves and things like that. And a few things from the garden. But uh, last year I took everything from the chickens and garden and put it right here and it's gone now. So uh, I took that and it it was looking really good, really dark and really good. So real quick, that's the color of the native soil here. It's sandy clay. And uh, so that's the color we're getting now. 
with this. This is three years old here, and I just turned it. It was sitting right there. And uh, the pile right there has moved over here to this location. So this is a bed I made. I borrowed my neighbor's uh, three-point tiller. And he was nice enough to let me use that. And I tilled this up nice. And then I uh, took my front end loader and put that whole thing of compost from that right-hand side of that compost pit and spread it on here and tilled that in. <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, chicken manure, straw, and from my folks' house, about, ah oh man, I don't know, 30 bags of leaves from trees that broke down all winter. And uh, we put that in here. So what do we got? We have, I planted asparagus here, and I don't think the seed was very good. There are a few little shoots. There is one right there. I think there's nine shoots out of all that. So I bought my seed at a little dinky hardware store where there wasn't hardly any customers uh, right at the onset of the pandemic. So I went where there was like no one in a store and probably no one ever goes there to buy seed. <laughs> so I bought these seeds and no telling how old they were. The others came up okay. So I want to bash on them too hard. So we got watermelons. We got two varieties. Uh, Sugar Babies is one, and I don't recall the other. The packages are down there on the other end, but the weather took them out. You can't read them anymore. Uh, they look kind of like that. So that says asparagus on it. <laughs> and uh, right here to the right-hand side of this walkway, right there is cantaloupe. And uh, only six or seven of those came up. We had... Uh, a few volunteer tomatoes come up so I just kind of I left them in place or I would transplant them so there's a tomato and here is something coming up volunteer and I don't know what it is it looks like it's a squash or a cucumber or, or something so that's from that compost from the garden waste there's this stuff coming up all in here and there's a little tomato that I transplanted there and this here is garlic. So I got a tickler on a uh, Instagram post, said our garlic is ready. I'm like, I'd like some garlic. So <laughs> I ordered it. Uh, it seemed like it was about 20 something bucks with shipping and all that. So I got this and there's probably uh, about a dozen other plants I have over in a barrel. So it's hard neck uh, garlic not soft neck so soft neck's what you usually get in the stores and this is a different variety so uh i got to reading about garlic and it says plant it in the fall and harvest in the spring so i emailed these guys and said hey i planted my garlic in the spring because you had it for sale and i thought that was the hot ticket and they said oh no no this is hard neck garlic uh if you have a long growing season you can harvest it in the fall so we're going to try that. So I've been reading up on garlic. So these are the rest of the watermelons. And I put some uh, triple 13 in there on a couple occasions. And I try to water it once a day, but sometimes we don't get to it. But this soil here, it holds the water pretty good, I've noticed. Okay, so we've got cantaloupe watermelon tomatoes and a few unknowns in here <laughs> and garlic all right let's get on up to the main garden up here and we'll show you what we got going on in there so these outside beds are a work in progress and they're mainly uh, flowers so uh, my wife likes to decorate them with these uh, bed frames which when she gets it all up it looks really pretty so there's a, some zinnias coming up in there and she will uh, thin those out and transplant them and put them in a line along here and they'll be up in that bed frame it'll look pretty cool but the bad thing about the bed frame is it's hard to get your arm back in there and weed behind that 
and I don't remember what she told me those were but uh, this side's done pretty good already the hollyhock back there and the comfrey plant so that comfrey plant was dug up split about four ways and it's already come back and these little fern like I don't remember the name of this I'm sorry but uh, it grows up and it, it grows into the fence and it'll climb along here and last year you can still see some of the vine from it and it filled up this whole trellis and it was growing down that way and it, and in towards the end of summer in the hottest part it has these pretty little red flowers that have long stems and the hummingbirds like them. Uh, honeybees can't really get their little proboscis down in there, but uh, hummingbirds like them. So yeah, it's a mess in here. <laughs> Got cement blocks left from when I had the plastic over stuff and uh, I had a good plan and it fell through. I'm gonna blame it on the pandemic. Uh, so I bought about a hundred foot roll, I think, of ground cover to roll out and cover this up. And then we ordered from Ace Hardware, was kind enough to bring it to us, no charge, this cedar mulch. And uh, that was the plan. And uh, the best plan sometimes don't follow through <laughs> but anyway yeah I know I'm sorry it's ugly okay enough of that so over here these sunflowers come up volunteer so we just let them go we had a few storms and blew them over once and uh, I staked uh, staked them up and tied them up there so uh, those are standing back up. But underneath the sunflowers, we got us carrots. So uh, I used a method uh, where you lay a board on top of the seed after you sow it, and it helps hold the moisture in, and you get better germination rates. So I think it worked. And over here in this bed is radish. They're probably ready. Now that one's split open. Yeah, I probably waited too long. I'm not a real radish fan, but I like growing them. Now that one doesn't look bad. Nice looking little radish. I like to put some salt on them and eat them, but uh, sometimes you get one that's just, it is not very good. I'll try that one later though. And uh, got me a jalapeno growing here, kind of in the shade. It's a hot one. I couldn't find any uh, cool ones. And uh, my grandson works at the Ace and he was looking for them for me, but uh, we didn't find any. So I'm just going with the hot ones. There was another one right there and it was, get, it was getting overcome by the uh, carrots. So uh, I took it down to uh, the watermelon garden and it's actually down there. Uh, you may have saw it. It didn't look too good. Uh, this is spinach, and it's grown from seed from the spinach that I had this winter that was in this bed right here under the uh, low tunnel that I had built with the plastic and the hoops. And that worked really good. We had lots of greens all through winter. So while I'm here, so this is tomatoes. These are celebrities. Uh, before the pandemic, I bought uh, six celebrities at Tractor Supply. And at that little store, when I went and got my seeds, they had a six pack of celebrities. So we've got 12 celebrities. And the ones from Tractor Supply are the bigger ones. And then the smaller ones uh, came from the other little hardware store. But uh, they're coming in good. You can't hardly tell them apart now. We had them in our window for the longest time, waiting for the, the cold temperatures to pass. 
Let's see, let's get on down the road. So in here we've got cilantro, and uh, we use that in salsa. And here we've got the, uh, the panel up there. So these are cucumbers, and we found that really works good growing them next to a panel like that and just let them vine up in there. And <clears throat> we always had trouble with all the weeds. So my wife had the great idea, let's put cardboard back there and suppress those weeds out. So it's, it's doing a good job. You can see right there, there's already stuff coming up. But, uh, that's gonna keep it under control. So the uh, cucumbers are looking good. And uh, here on the corner, we got uh, hollyhocks. Sun's kind of glaring there. And uh, hollyhocks are blooming nice, but uh, they've got a blight on them. It, the leaves kind of turned yellow and then brown spots, and now the leaves are just dying. So uh, there you can kind of see what they look like when they first start doing it. But yeah, the whole plant's that way. And we did some reading about it, and then uh, basically the only thing you can do to uh, get rid of that is just dig the plant up and get rid of it. So, uh, but we thought we would go ahead and let them bloom. But uh, the bees look like they're liking it. There's some honeybees flying around there. Well, there was, oh, there he goes. I, no I noticed uh, bumblebees really like those too. On the back row, we have bush green beans, blue lake. So had a little bit of uneven germination. I replanted a few in there, but they, they're not coming up. I think we got enough. Those will bush up pretty good. And then over here on the right-hand side, on the inner part of the beds, those are our pole beans, green beans, and those are bush lake pole beans. And uh, they came up fast, and they're already vining up there. And around the edges, we've got the marigolds to kind of help with the bugs. Supposed to, anyway. <laughs> and there's some more hollyhocks. Last year, these were really beautiful. And the foliage is just going all brown. Uh, this is celery. It was planted actually last year, so it's it's bolted twice now. <laughs> we have to cut celery off of it, and my wife put some back and put some away in the freezer. Uh, she freezes it in uh, Ziploc bags in a flat, laid out flat, so when you need celery, you just snap off a piece and throw it in the pot. Uh, down in here, we've got some dill. There's a little dill plant right there. I think that's what that is. Yeah, there's another one over here. So we got some dill for our pickles. So this year for our, our cucumbers, I'm gonna try and make some of those uh, cold pickles so they stay nice and crunchy, like the uh, Klaus and pickles. Here's our squash. We had a hard time with squash last year. The vine borer and whatever got into them squash beetles but uh, they're doing good now i ordered a insect net to go over these and it's supposed to be here tomorrow and i may be already be too late they may already be on there and laid eggs but we'll see uh those are yellow neck squash i believe that's what those are and is here's our other row of tomatoes so we moved our tomatoes to these two beds this year. They were in this bed the prior two years and we used this trellis here and tied them up with strings. So this year we've got the, the panels and we're gonna tie them up to these panels. And we've already started doing that. We use the little round clips that go around and you put the string in that and you just tie it up. Uh, let's see, got some chives. Uh, my mom gave me those chives. Uh, gave us those chives uh, a couple years ago. They're doing good. And beets, which 
I despise beets. Yuck. The wife can have all of those. <laughs> There's a wild sunflower. And the vining stuff that I can't remember what it's called. So the plan is, she says, she's going to dig these up and transplant them around along the edges here so they'll start vining. But there's a, quite a few of those plants in here. And from what I understand, those are really hard to start from seed. But once you get them established, they'll come up volunteer from seed a lot better. Obviously, they're coming up pretty good right there. Okay. Talked enough about this garden. I believe I've hit everything. Let's uh, go on around and we'll show you the bed over here. There's a nice shot of the house. So they've got to, all the posts are painted or stained, the corbels. And they finished the dormers yesterday, painting the dormers, but they still have to do the little top parts. And I think after that, the outside will basically be done. All right. Here's our cold frame. That side's full of comfrey. And I put some comfrey root in here to grow more. I don't know why. <laughs> Plenty. And uh, got some bulbs uh, growing in there. Day, uh, some kind of, is that a daylily? So we divide these off and plant them other places. Here's what I like. Here's what I'm proud of this year onions. These onions are from Dixondale Farms and uh, they're doing really good. Uh, I ordered two bundles and I think they're about nine, ten bucks a bundle, but you get I think around 50 onions in a bundle. So I didn't plant half of them. I gave a bunch uh, to some of the kids, but uh, I bought a yellow sweet and a white something. I can't remember the names, but uh, man, look at that. So uh, I followed their directions, and it's really great when you buy from them. They'll, they'll email you and say, hey, have you done this? Have you done that? Have you fertilized? Are you watering? Are you weeding? And uh, so the way you plant these is, is two rows right next to each other with fertilizer uh, in the soil right between them. So I got, I've done that twice. So I think the yellow ones are up top and the white ones are down below. But, uh, and then as the year goes on, uh, you'll side dress them with uh, 3300 pure nitrogen uh, fertilizer. So yeah, they're doing good. Uh, I watered them this morning, or yesterday, might be the last time I water them. They're getting close to being done. So Dixondale Farms, uh, there's a website, you can check them out. I'll put a link below if I remember to. Maggie, Maggie came to visit me. Hey, what are you doing? Well, she's not interested. Okay, let's uh, talk about chickens for a minute. So, uh, there's one of the blue lace Wyandots down there, one of the young chicks. So we've got six new chicks, three Buff Forpingtons, and three blue laced Wyandots. So we had the chicks in this introduction pen and uh, it's got little bars there that, so the chicks can go in and out but the big chickens can't so if they get picked on they have a place of refuge there so that's why we have this here and uh, I don't think they're in here right now no so this is where they roost at night and they're still roosting in here. They didn't want to go into the big pen. So got their starter feed there and that's the last of their starter food. 
but we had a couple of chickens go broody on us so we uh i put them in there to uh break their broodiness and i locked out the little chickens but they they wouldn't go in the big coop the little chickens wouldn't so how are we doing on eggs we got three there how many you got hmm? so she's not broody the way you tell is when you touch a broody chicken or put your hand near them they'll puff up stick their feathers all out so she's just up in here laying she's got three oops it's a little early to have more than that many eggs, six. We've been getting nine, 10 a day, but now that we broke these broody ones, they will uh, start laying too. In a few months, our little ones will start laying. So there's a couple of the blue ones. Yeah, the little ones are under here. They're about the same size as the big ones. Yeah, chickens, they really like that comfrey. I give them that every now and then as a treat. Boy, it's been really nice having these chickens uh, during this pandemic. Uh, all the eggs we need. And we give some to our neighbors and other folks. Uh, our uh, daughter lives in not too far from us. We get her quite a few. And uh, they started, they got their own chickens now, but they're little. But, uh, yeah, chickens are a good thing. Let's get on down to the beehives. <laughs> 